A few years ago, one of our art teachers talked about taking our schools from a space to a place to a home. School shouldn't just be a place where students come to learn and then leave. It has to be a community that cares and challenges our students. That home mentality is what we're trying to build here. And we've continued to support our students as learners and as people. Our district recently rolled out a one-to-one -one laptop initiative, and our teachers have done an amazing job preparing our students in the 21st century. Now, more than ever, we need to let students be innovators and find their passions before they leave our school and our community. This year, a number of teachers have taken this to the next level, adopting Google's 20% policy for innovation in their company to our own classrooms. Called Genius Hour, this project provides students with the time and support to research and create a product based on their interests. Many have asked, can students learn with so many restrictions and procedures taken away? We want the results to speak for themselves. When Miss Shears first assigned it, I was really excited because I thought it was something different other than what we've usually done in language arts classes and it wasn't like writing a paper or doing like a project, like it was something we could really put a lot of effort into and do something we're really interested in. Um, at first I was kind of confused and then I realized, hey, I will be getting to do my own thing and then I realized, oh my gosh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I was just really excited about it. I was nervous because I'm usually like directed in projects by my teacher and that's the first time that I had to like come up with my own ideas and do it myself. When I first heard the idea I actually felt more like a student as opposed to a teacher and I was excited about it because I thought to myself that I wanted to do the project and I find that when I'm motivated about doing something in my classroom usually the students are too so I thought that even though it sounded a little risky because it was different I really wanted to try it because I thought that it had a lot of potential and would motivate students to learn something that they really cared about um, I was I would say I was a little nervous um, because it's something so different um, and it's also something that is I'm not familiar with, um, in, but at the same time, tapping into the student's interest. Um, the population I work with is often, you know, lacks motivation or is not interested in, you know, the traditional literature and books that we read. Um, and the cool thing about it is that I got to saw, see some kids in a different light that were able to um, read and learn about things that they're actually interested in. Um, I thought it was going to be a cool project because we got to teach ourselves something and learn about a topic that we wanted to and you know the teacher wasn't telling us what we had to do it was like an independent project and I was excited about it well my reaction was I was really excited to do this project I never really got to do something on my own in school before there's really no rubric no outline no anything and I liked it I got to do what I wanted what I loved what I wanted to like, get into and I thought it was just fun overall the project um, well, at first I actually didn't really believe it because we never get to do anything like this in school where we can choose what you want to do and there's not anything you have to follow, like you could really do anything. So I thought it was pretty cool though. Um, at first I was pretty confused when um, they first assigned it, but then after I realized what they were talking about, I got pretty excited about it and I started thinking about what I was going to do right away. Um, I thought it was great because every day in school we're always doing work and being graded on it but this time we actually got to choose what we were going to be doing and what we were going to be graded on. We spent probably around an hour and a half of class time uh, reading articles about, about Google, uh, reading uh, selections from uh, Malcolm Gladwell's Outliers, about 10,000 hours to become an expert in things, uh, looking at the ideas of motivation, uh, relative to cognitive tasks versus uh, things that might be more uh, uh, physical labor tasks um, and how people uh, become motivated. And uh, we kind of were leading them to the idea of, of this intrinsic motivation that I mentioned earlier. And uh, they're, oh, oh, if we didn't have grades and if we didn't have to worry about this, man, high school would be awesome and it's so much pressure and, you know, we need to have more freedom. This was kind of their reaction. So after about an hour and a half of class time building this up, when we presented the first genius uh, project to them um, and told them, all right, 20% of your time is devoted to anything uh, you want, uh, there was silence and I think they were shocked. Uh, students started to raise their hand. Uh, you know, is there a rubric for this? Uh, how are we getting graded? 
what do you what do you mean I, I choose? Uh, what do you mean I can do anything I want? And we said, well, guys, you know, we've just we've just spoken for the last two class periods about you know the need to have more of this type of um, environment in, in education, and, and you're psyched about this. Now you seem hesitant. So it, it took them a, a little bit of time before uh, I think they they fully grasped the fact that we really wanted them to. Um, uh, do go on their own, you know. Uh, that that we wanted them to to um, to find the motivation, uh, to find um, the independence, um, and and to do something that they were interested in. And I think once they kind of wrapped their brain around it, uh, they were pretty psyched. Well, we presented the idea of problems with school, how students don't always get to choose what they want to learn about, and how. That results in students not really knowing their passions and what they want to do after school's over. So we talked about how companies like Google have what's called 20% time, which is really the same as Genius Hour, and allows students and workers in these companies to choose what they want to try to do. And students were kind of shocked at first when they heard that we were going to allow them to choose what they learned about. But after thinking about it for a little while, they kind of understood the idea that it's a really cool idea because they get to choose what they want to be passionate about and learn about in the classroom. I would just say to do something you're really interested in because if you pick something that you're not really that passionate about, it's not going to be as fun and it's not going to be as rewarding in the end. Um, a piece of advice would be to not give up and to like really give it your all and just walk out of there with a smile on your face because you know you actually did it. I would say do something you really love because for the amount of time you spend on it, you don't want to be bored doing it and you want to do something you don't know that much about yet because you have to be able to research and it's like it feels good when you learn the new information and then get to share it with everyone else. I would say to learn something new, if, like for example, I know how to play the piano and the ukulele is really different from that, so I had a lot of fun doing it. And I knew nothing about um, string instruments, so I learned a lot about that. So do something that's really different from what you already play and it'll be very fun. Make sure to get an early start on whatever you're doing to either, if you don't like it, make sure you don't like it quickly, or if you do like it, try to like get a lot done early on rather than cram all of it at the end. Uh, definitely stay ahead of your due dates. Do all the research you can because it really helps you make the final product work out better. I was actually not surprised but like elated to see how much some of my students were able to accomplish in what is a pretty short amount of time. For example, I have a student who had a piano in her house and had never played it before. And by taking out a book on how to play the piano, talking to people who could play the piano, watching videos, she actually taught herself how to play an entire song in full. I have um, a student who has a cousin who's deaf and wanted to be able to communicate with her. So she took the time to learn sign language and then not only just learn the letters, but also to be able to sign an entire song so that she could sing to her little cousin. I had students who learned how to cook foods that represented where their parents were from so that they were more connected to their culture. Uh, I, I guess two that stand out right off the bat would be a student by the name of Chloe. Uh, came up to us and early on had an idea that she wanted to do something that uh, around the idea of bullying in the school environment and how to handle it and what to do about it. Um, and I know myself and Ryan had had several conversations with her as far as we really didn't know in six, seven weeks what she could put together that would be meaningful and lasting and, and, and really have an effect on the students uh, and on the student body in, in general. And after a couple hours of talking with her and trying to find an avenue for her to go down, we really didn't have anything. Um, and Chloe, on her own, came up with this idea of WIS compliments. And it's the idea of like so much bullying now takes place online, is cyberbullying. And she basically heard an idea that there had been some other schools that started these compliments page, pages where uh, via Facebook kids can kind of like 
attach other students' names and anonymously leave compliments like, hey, you had a great game today in soccer, you scored two goals. Hey, the presentation you gave today in, in chemistry class was incredible. Um, hey, I saw you help another student down in the lunch hall today, I thought it was really nice, and, and attach a name to it that ended up on their Facebook page. And it wasn't something that I would have thought of. And in a matter of, uh, uh, you know what I mean, a couple days, it was up and running. Uh, she didn't want her name affixed to it, so she just told a couple students, like, hey, you mind kind of getting this thing started and attaching it to a couple people? Um, and, and it took off. And I, I thought the idea was just fantastic. Uh, addressed a, an issue that I think schools are struggling to address from the top down. It was organic. It was student-created. I think in that way, it might, it's probably going to get a lot more buy-in than anything a teacher or guidance counselor or principal does bring to the table. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. I think a second one would be a, a student by the name of Drew um, tried to create his own carnivorous plant. Uh, Drew is a giant carnivorous plant collection. He has a real fi fascination with these things. And I guess getting up on stage and talking to a group of students about carnivorous plants, I wasn't sure the sort of engagement he'd get from the audience, but he, he turned it more into a message of science is really accessible and all the products that I use are, are things that you can buy at Walmart and Target for a couple dollars. Uh, science is often like, like really scary for ninth and 10th grade students. And it's kind of taught that way that this is something that, that you kind of, that, that's beyond you and you need other people to bring it to you and show you and adults and experts. And, and Drew's message was, I'm motivated in science and all this information is out there and we need more kids doing science projects that are, that are intrinsically motivated, that are self-motivated in their houses so that, you know what I mean, when we get to school, it's not a big boogeyman science class. It's something that kids are interested in, that they partake in. It's not somebody telling them stuff. It's more them kind of interacting with the material, which I thought was a fantastic message for kids. We've learned that this type of learning is empowering. Students spend more time on projects they care about, and the level of sharing and reflection is impressive. Genius Hour and 20% Time are important to our school because it brings everyone together. We're able to learn what each student cares about what they're passionate about, and what can make this place a true home for learning.